Well, next up here at Thunder Sport GB, it's the HMT Racing Pre-National Sport 600 class. New for 2012, a chance for some newcomers that are on 600s to get out on circuit, learn their trade, and hopefully win themselves a place on the Sportsman Elite 600 grid here at Thunder Sport GB. Pole position is Lee Williams, number 94. There with the orange vest, Lee a former super moto rider having a go out on the 600 there. Second place championship leader Barry Teasdale, 224. Been so impressed with him uh, since the opening round back at Brands Hatch. He really has come on a long way. Joe Newbold is in third place there. Seventh overall in the championship. And then there's number 16 Pierce. Uh, Dean, who's featured uh, in every race so far this season and finds himself fifth overall in the championship. Barry Teasdale it is that leads overall then 185 points. He's 75 points ahead of Chris Wilkinson in second, who's locked on points with Mark Burdett. Michael Golden fourth overall ahead of Dean Pearce, Ben Neary, Joe Newbold, Greg Scanlon, Chris Halliwell and Sonny Martin. The green flag at the back says that we are ready to go racing. Keep your eyes out for number 224, the championship leader, the red and white Honda CBR, the rider with the black helmet, and he has got off to a fine start and leads into turn one. It looks like Joe Rubel, number five, the rider from Norton Marsh, has got up into second place, and there's a rider struggling away from the line there, and the chain's gone. The chain has uh, completely gone off that bike, and I believe that's Ben Neary. Ben Neary, a rider, sixth overall in the championship. Well, it's an odd place to have the uh, chain going. Had a good go, number 43. We'll get a shot of him at some point. He's uh, just in about third or third, in about tenth or eleventh place at the moment. You just see there Adam Exton's going through. A number of rookie events, obviously, this is effectively a rookie class with the 600s. You are allowed to install all four of the 600 bikes if you so please. And uh, you are allowed to enter the school. Uh, 600 class if you want, but. This is where to learn your trade, and at the moment there is no catching number 224 Barry Teasdale, who on this opening lap has got himself over a second lead already. Up to all the tears leap go Barry, and uh, he chalks off another lap. And for a rider that hasn't seen uh, many of these circuits before this campaign, he looks like a promising prospect. There was a bit of a moment there for Lee Jackson, number 123. Cycle Street Yamaha one. But 224, Barry Teasdale, the rider from Proto, sponsored by PTH, uh, Munich Paul Deere, Paul Meyer, and Paul Deere. And there's a former already, and that looks like Mr. Pierce. 
number six, and he's not a happy bunny at all. So much so, he walks away from the fight. He's actually not going to pick it up now, so he has done already. So, <laughs> Dean Pearce out of this race, and that won't do his championship any favours. So, we've lost fifth place Dean Pearce overall in the championship. Ben Neary is out of it as well. Gives a chance for Joe Noble, Greg Scanlon, and Chris Hayden to close up a little bit. And speaking of Greg Scanlon, we just saw a little bit of him there. It's uh, Daniel Ingham is out there as well. Daniel Ingham, a rider whose name is uh, instantly recognisable. We've got another faller. And that was, uh, that's had a quick pace on the circuit. That's number 21, Gary Greenhouse. Oh, and he's a bit dizzy after that. I'm not surprised. That was a quick pace to be coming off. And uh, just on the exit of the Cascades. Major tank slap going on there for Lee Jackson, just ahead of number three, Mark Vernon. Mark Vernon is going to be in line to take a second place overall quite comfortably in the race. Matthew Walter in there, number 80. Well turned back machine, that one riding with the orange vest. He's up into the top six, but at the moment there's no catching Barry Teasdale. the line and it's a 146.3 for Barry Teasdale. Lee Williams comes across the line for 157.7. So there's a difference of 1.4 seconds in lap time there between Barry Teasdale and the next quickest man. Further down the field we have over 30 riders out there on the circuit. Charlie Oakman just inside the top 20. Sun Martin and uh, Dylan James are battling out for the final point positions. But uh, a few other riders that are inside the top 10, Joe Rubel, Adam Exton's Chris Green, Chris Wilkinson, who I mentioned second overall in the championship in ninth. And he won't be pleased to hear the fact that out front is Barry T. Now Lee Williams, of course, well, this is uh, one of his first times out on the bike, so he hasn't got himself into the top 10 yet. Stay where he is, he will uh, take the second position in the championship. And there is Lee Williams, number 94, just around in the exit of his ease. There's number 67, and number 60. 67 is Carl Boyle from Scandalsdale, 60 is uh, Chris Green, the world is Kirk. inside the top 10 as we speak. Back towards Lodge Corner, and we're here with your race leader with the black helmet. It is number 224, Barry Teasdale, whose lap upon lap just keeps on putting in times of a 146, and nobody else has managed to get themselves into that time zone as yet. So, provided Barry is receiving signals on pit wall, he should be home and dry. There's number 64, Chris Halliwell. himself on the podium and Chris is currently ninth in the championship but 20 points or 16 points would possibly push him up into the top five or six overall in this first HMT pre-national sports the country race that we're bringing you on the Thunder Sport iPlayer. to see the chequered flag, I would imagine, because most of the work is done already. HMT, of course, the sponsor of this class, uh, Holt Beach Motorcycle Tires Limited, a uh, long-standing supporter now of Thundersport GB. They've got a massive truck in the panic here at Thundersport GB, and they help out so many riders. They'll help out with set-up as well, and they've been a supporter of 
Phil Crow, who races in the Morello Services GP1 Championship. We'll bring you uh, one of theirs races on the iPlayer at some point soon also. Ryan just sitting up and being lapped there by Chris, uh, by Lee Williams from the 94. This is a good ride from Lee Williams in second. It's, despite the fact that he's uh, lonely in second, he's still putting in lap times a lot quicker than the guys in third and fourth. We lost, unfortunately, Ben Neary, Dean Pearce, and Gary Greenup. Dan Hill went able on lap three also. There goes uh, that white and blue bike with the orange bib. That was Chris Helliwell, who's uh, that time suggests that he might be able to sneak himself onto the podium if he can get himself involved in a decent battle with uh, Mark Burdett and Matthew Waldron. The line though to complete another lap, it is 224 Barry Teasdale. He's got himself a seven eight second lead now. He just transfers the his weight over to the other side of the bike. This is the battle for third between Bird in there, Halliwell, and uh, one two three. That's Lee Jackson in third place on that Honda and oh, fourth place. Sorry. Heading into Old Hall, that's number 16. Daniel Ingham from Wilmslow, sponsored by SES Race Products. Just inside the top 12 at the moment, that's the head of Greg Scanlon and Steve Catman. And that's late breaking there from number one, two, three into uh, Hizzy Chicane. He just manages to stay upright. That's Lee Jackson, number one, two, three there. Almost had the back wheel in the air going down into his. But yeah, I was thinking about Lee Williams in the Supermoto style. Um, but it has worked. There's a number of riders that have come across from Supermoto and have done very well. Just look at Christian Iden, a rider that still races in Supermoto and is currently in British Super Sport. It worked out well for him. Across the line once more, Barry Teasdale. Just so consistent. It's another 146 for him. Constantly a second quicker than anybody else behind. And that there is the scrap for third. And Chris Halliwell has got a bit of a gap now on 123 Lee Jackson. Bird in there just behind. And number 18, Matthew Waldron. Waldron is a good drive on the exit of the corner. And that will give him the momentum down towards Cascades. Whilst those guys are dealing with Cascades and Island Bend, Barry Teasdale's now coming up to Britons. It's just quite easy for him at the moment. He's able to relax as well, and that makes such a difference when you're leading a race and you'll be looking forward to the next hour and hour motorsports.com sports from elite race because then he'll be up against a number of riders trying to get himself up into the top ten. Certainly Formula 600 wise, he's actually been on the podium in the Sportsman League Club, but overall it's that podium he wants. It was almost a bit of a moment there, and Mark Bird has uh, really chopped the nose off another rider. And that was uh, number 80, Matthew Waldron, that nearly fell into the kitty litter as a result of that manoeuvre. Across the line, though, to take the chequered flag and win the race by a country mile. Barry Teasdale wins this one from ease, the HMT Pre-National Sport 600. Second place, well-deserved, number 94, Lee Williams takes it. And then third place is going to go to Chris Helliwell, who's very happy with that. Mark Burdett seems content with four. And in fifth place, Matthew Waldron, number 80, on the Triumph. AC Mark Burdett, fourth place man, currently third in the championship, but he will move up to second overall, so he looks uh, quite content, doesn't he? I hope he doesn't think he's won it. <laughs> there 
make their way into the collecting area. Confirmation then of the results. Barry Tindall wins from Lee Williams. Chris Halliwell third. Mark Burnett fourth ahead of Matthew Waldron. And Joe Noble, number 45, finished in sixth. And your winner, Barry Tindall! That says it all. Barry Tindall the winner. Chris Halliwell, third place. We talked that up. You said you'd see me up here. I uh, tried, I got a horrendous start all the way back into about ninth position and I got bullied and then I managed to just work my way through the pack and lucky enough two lads hit who were dead in front of me and then it just came together, I passed the last two lads with a couple of laps to go and then I nearly had a massive high side at the second corner out of it and just plodded on, I think I've done my first PB lap time and that I've got to have done, I was so hard work, so hot out there as well but really happy with it, hopefully I'll do the same in the second one. Brilliant, who do you want to thank me? Oh, I've got uh, Sid Smith, who's looked after bike all week and changed springs and everything. Uh, AGS, XI Technologies, uh, Rotherham Advertiser, We Are Fine, uh, Old Rainfield Crew, uh, Daz, who's here today, uh, Glyn, he's not here, he's set my suspension up yesterday, he's had to go today, uh, but I uh, know my friends and family, that's brilliant, Uncle Mark and everybody who does everything for me, I had to do nothing myself, it's great. <laughs> Factory rider, thanks very much, mate. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Cheers, mate, thank you. Lee Williams, second place. How did it go for you out there? Yeah, it went really well. Unfortunately, I just didn't get the best to start. Um, you know, me used to start on a supermotor by the 600s a bit more harder to get off the line, but I got away and tried to catch the leader, but it's just that little bit quicker than me, and I just settled for second, which is good enough in my eyes. Well done, mate. Who do you want to thank? Um, everyone you can see on the bib. Um, Andy Coop from Factory Kitchens, um, Ken from Majestic Engineering, and Alan from Pem Tires, who supplied me with some good tires for this weekend. Thanks very much. Well done, Lee. Barry, another win. This is getting rather boring. I speak to you more than I do my wife. Well done. Cheers. Um, I really didn't expect a win today. I had a kind of crash yesterday and uh, done quite a bit of damage to my bike. Knocked myself about a bit, but plus I probably only got about 10 laps in yesterday before qualifying. And I've never rode here before, so I'm learning the track all the time. And I seem to have clicked with it a little bit in that first phase, so hopefully I can go a bit faster again in the next one. Excellent, well done. Who are you going to thank, Barry? Um, well, I've got to thank Bob Henderson, because without him I would never get the bike fixed for the day. Um, and obviously my dad, um, TRP, and Premier Truck Hire as well. Well done, Barry. I know you've got another race, and uh, sorry to keep you. <laughs> Cheers. It all started back in 1976. Elise, the original gold. We've always stayed ahead of the competition by keeping our clients ahead of the competition. Whether you're a professional racer or simply looking for the perfect driving experience, Elise shock absorbers offer superior performance, safety, and comfort. We are the cutting edge of racing technology. And with over 30 years of experience and a never-ending flow of innovations, we intend to keep pole position. Our dedicated staff works side-by-side -side with the greatest racing teams in the world to deliver suspension without suspense. Simply put, Olin's shocks are state-of-the-art for motorcycles, cars, four wheels, and snowmobiles. The number of fans and customers are growing and the demand for excellent service is increasing. To be in the forefront of advanced suspension takes passion. A passion for perfection in every detail, in every part. With more than 200 world championship titles in racing, we boast with the very latest technological advancements in both conventional and electronic suspension systems. Our world-leading product lines, TTX and CES, are the result of this devotion to detail and innovation. All products undergo numerous tests to ensure optimal function and quality. To us, striving for excellence is common sense. The future of high-performance suspension is here.
next up here, a very sunny Alton Park, the second of the HNT pre-national sport 600 races for the rookies out there on the 600s and once again lining up on pole position. Well, if we see the same again as we did in race one, Barry Teasdale, number 224, will be running away with it on pole position though, sorry, number 94, Lee Williams, that former supermoto rider looking to get to grips with the Yamaha R6. There is Barry Teasdale looking confident and focused and Joe Newbold alongside him on the Honda CBR 600. Fourth on the grid will be Dean Pierce, number six, who uh, crashed out of that earlier race on the Triumph, so he'll be looking to pick up as many points as possible. Um, Chris Wilkinson has lost out in second overall in the championship. Mark Burdett, who finished fourth in race one, will have taken over second place overall. But it does mean that Barry Teasdale's lead in the championship, number 224, is almost at 100 points. Green flag at the back, and it looks as though we're ready to go racing then, and away from the line once more. It's a good start from Barry Teasdale, number 224. Dean Pierce has got away well also, and as they go up into... Oh, and there's... That looked like there may have been an accident into turn one. Howard... Oh, he's not been able to hang on to it for a minute there. I thought it was going to be same for the century. That's Lee Jackson, one, two, three. He got to, his nose chopped off at the start, not allowed to, to remount. Championship as well, but as they head down towards Lodge Corner, it's this man again, Barry Teasdale. And unless some of these guys can pick their form up ready for Snetterton in a few weeks' time, uh, Barry Teasdale might have this championship won by the time we, uh, well, with about three or four rounds remaining, if he's not too careful, he's riding very, very well at the moment. There's uh, fourth and fifth place, that's Joe Newbold and Mark Burdett. There's Chris Hellywell up ahead of number 80, Matthew Waldron and Adam Extance. Oh, that's 
say that just in the background there, number six, Dean Pierce, uh, running over the rumble strips and onto the grass. And that's just allowed Lee Williams on the Yamaha just to close in a little bit, maybe give him the confidence and the chance to, to pass Dean on the triumph. Dean Pierce currently lapping in the 46s. There's Chris Wilkinson, number 43. Chris uh, currently just hovering in the 12th place around uh, with Greg Scanlon, two of them that have been Thunder Sport 600 riders since day one. Back to the front, though, it is Barry Teasdale. It uh, does say in the race programme that Barry's racing. Suzuki 600, but I can assure you that that's, uh, that's definitely a Honda fairings that he's got on as you look at number 35. It's Anthony Charlie from Coventry. Into Island Bend again comes Barry Teasdale. And it's down into Shell Oil. Working this really so far this season. Since round one, between Brands Hatch and there or thereabouts, it was looking like Michael Golden might feature in the championship in the early stage. And Michael's just outside the points at the moment. He had a good round for Brands Hatch. I expect Michael probably to do quite a few rain dances before the end of this season. There's Barry no reason it just laps Ben Murphy on the triumph at 675. Lap times in this race absolutely identical to what he posted in the earlier races. Second and third place men come through here. <laughs> and uh, it's ever so easy here at Alton Park, especially into his ease, just to lose your braking point. Break a little bit too late and uh, you will go down the escape road. There is number 35 again. It's uh, Anthony Charlie, who's uh, just inside the points. He's having some fun out there. Chasing, should I say, Matt Parker at the moment. Once again, Barry Teasdale goes across the line and posts uh, a mid-146, which is a full second quicker than anyone else can go. Now, this battle for second is starting to hold up a little bit as uh, Pierce comes under fire from Matt Williams. Williams, of course, went straight on earlier, but hasn't gained any advantage, so to speak. He was just behind Dean Pierce anyway, so uh, I would imagine that race control won't uh, take any further action on that if there's no advantage to be gained. Barry Teasdale heads into Shell Oils. His lead now around about uh, four and a half, five seconds. That uh, race for second place could be quite close from here until the end. Mark Burnett, um, has seen off the challenge from Joe Rubel now and is in fourth place. Matt Waldron is up to sixth ahead of Christopher Green, Ben Neary eighth, Daniel Ingham in ninth, and Chris Wilkinson coming up into tenth place. There goes leader Barry Teasdale, and side by side, here comes Pierce and Williams, and will he make his breaking point this time as they tip in? He does indeed, and it's ever so tight there. As soon as you tip in, you've got to change transfer the weight of the bike over and, and get it tipped in as you just see number 93 there going through it's Ben Neary behind uh, Christopher Green oh and there's a rider there that's Adam Extens well there's his bike where's Adam as uh, that's into his ease so it's a relatively slow place to be crashing but uh, if that's a high side it may well have winded him somewhat Hopefully Adam is up and okay. Here comes Barry, stamping down the gears before heading into launch and up over Deer's Leap to complete another lap, and it's the last lap coming up now for Barry. Into Old Hall Corner, past and onto the avenue, Denton's, and then down into Cascades. on the power past Lakeside and up towards it's almost flat out island bend on the left and then down to second gear into Shell Oils using the knees right on the apex there there's so much grip on the exit careful for high side though cranked over slightly on the brakes whilst the bike's still cranked over in the wet you have to be ever so careful 
back on the tower, just with the apex there, over the hilltop, and then down the hill towards his easy set, coming up on Michael Dexter, for the lap on Michael before the end of this one, probably. Second gear again, and he'll click up another one just before he tips right to the exit of his ease, and then up towards Clay Hill. There's uh, Joe Newbold in fifth place behind Mark Burnett. Williams are going to be fighting quite to the line for second place. There's nothing in it between the pair of them, just about a tenth between them. But as Barry Teasdale makes his way down to Lodge Corner for the final time, it's going to be a double win for Barry Teasdale and his lead as we go into Snetterton is going to be pretty much, I think, in fact, I think it's going to be over 100 points. Across the line comes Barry, it's another win for him. He extends the championship lead. We wait for second place, it is going to go to Dean Pearce on the try, so he makes up for that crash in race one. There's another podium for Lee Williams on the Yamaha R6 in third. More experience for Lee, and fourth place is going to go to Mark Burden, so he is going to be confirmed second in the championship as we leave Alton Park and head into Snetterton and Norfolk. Well, confirmation of the results then. Barry Teasdale takes another comfortable victory ahead of Dean Pearce. Lee Williams third ahead of Mark Burdett, Joe Newbold and Matthew Waldron. Winner, and there he is. Centre, Barry in the middle with Dean and Lee. Lee Williams, third place. Um, you must be happy with that. Yeah, happy with the, both podium and two races. Second in the first one, third in this one. But, you know, it's just got to keep going forward and upwards now, haven't you? Well, you, had a, you had a good battle with Dean, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I had a good battle. Um, you know, I passed him two laps ago, and unfortunately, I was just a little bit late, too early on the brakes going into the last bend, and he just sneaked up the inside. But at the end of this racing, there's always more to come, isn't there? He's a crafty one. <laughs> Who do you like to thank, mate? Uh, same as the first one, everyone on my bib. Um, Andy Fadge Kitchens, Ken from Majestic Engineering, and Alan Boff from Pem Tires, who've supplied me with some good tires this weekend. Thank you. Well, Dean Pierce, second place. Um, that made up for Mallory. Yeah, um, made up for first race. I got knocked off. Um, enjoyed it. Too hot, too unfit, knackered. I'm ready for a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you want to thank? Uh, my dad, um, everybody that helps me. Um, I ain't got no sponsors, but everybody that helps me. Um, Fund the sport and Marshalls. HMT Racing Pre National Sport 600 winner Barry Teasdale. Another clean set of heels. You sort of getting the hang of this? Ah, uh, it was a uh, really good race. That one, I was uh, I felt nice and comfortable. It was good. I just seemed to be able to just run the same pace the whole time. Well, as you said uh, earlier, you you know it's your first visit to this place, and um, you got into quite a nice rhythm there. Yeah, I mean, I'm amazed I've managed to do it today because after yesterday, I mean, I was riding so bad yesterday and after crashing and everything. But uh, no, I feel really comfortable today. I feel like I'm getting the track. That was good. I mean, you're getting used to all these tracks nicely. Who do you want to thank? Um, well, I've got to thank my uncle Edward. Um, TRP, Premier Truck Hire. I also want to say thanks to HMT as well because they give away the tyres for this week meeting. So after winning the tournament, that was part of my prize. So really good. Oh, that's fantastic. Very, very well done. And I know you've got to go and get into uh, another race in the upper echelon, <laughs> which you're doing very well also in. And uh, the people will be able to watch that on the other channel. Hi, um, Motors TV. Absolutely, you got it. Well done. Right, cheers. <laughs>